So in the last four years that I've had this channel, the topic of crop circles is one that I've definitely kept a distance from because to be honest, it's full of controversy because every time I come across a video or an article or anything in between, they always talk about the human hoaxers aspect and it's very dismissive and, and I can get that. But over the last year, but very specifically over the last few weeks, okay, I've been contacted by a handful of researchers and witnesses that have mentioned that there's a little bit more to this than the human hoaxing aspect to it. And so I ended up deciding just to do a deep dive into this and ultimately what I ultimately found is that crop circles, it has a, it has something tangible to it that we can put our hands on and study. And so this episode is going to be talking about some of the pioneers that prove that there is something going on more so than just the hoaxer explanation. So just for a moment, just for the at least 90 minutes. Let's suspend our bias and see where this takes us. I'm going to bring in my co-host, Jimmy Church of Fade of Black Radio. Jimmy, aliens. Aliens. Done by aliens. Done by aliens. Done by aliens. Uh, I, how are you, Christina? How are you been up to? Uh, researching. Working. You sound, you Eating. sound, you sound melancholy today. And I know why, because this is a subject. It's like a minefield, right? It's like you want to tiptoe through this one. And no, no, you don't have to. Crop circles are an enigma. And and we're going to do a deep dive today. I'm okay with that. Uh, I, like you, I haven't done many shows on crop circles, but I've done a lot of research. And uh, I've, I've been contacted uh, throughout the years by uh, many uh, that are involved in it and, and it, that go out for crop circle season and watch everything out there uh, unfold and fly over and, and see what, what happened on the night before. Um, and it's, it's, it's pretty incredible. And you know what? Enigma is the right word here. Uh, it's definitely a mystery with a history. It goes back uh, quite a long ways. And we'll be discussing that too as well. But um, why? What? 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 Why? Why did you decide to tiptoe into this one today? Well, as mentioned in the intro, I've had people tell me about them um, more so than previously. So, like, I feel like just in the last what 2024, I've received more questions and comments on it than ever before. And for a very long time, I thought to myself. Because the majority of them have been categorized as human hoaxes, like I, why why cover it, right? But there's still that percentage, that small percentage that is in the category of unexplained. And then after doing the research for today's show specifically, I thought to myself, there's some interesting things to it, like UFO sightings, like orbs in and around these crop circles, healing properties. Could that be the placebo effect, right? All of these different things that we can't always categorize with hoaxers. And so that's what this show is about. It's just providing more information than that one article that maybe many people have read at some point in their life where they say, nope, this is it's only this, it's it's these two people, it's this group of people, and that's that. There's a little bit more to it. And there's actually been some significant scientific research on that we are going to get into that I think needs more credence that people do not talk about. So I'm excited for this episode. There's a good amount of stuff to cover. And to be honest with you, Jimmy, I'm glad I'm not doing this episode alone. So I want to say, well, well, I, I, I say, I say, I say not so fast, not so fast on the hoaxing part. And not so fast. There's one interesting aspect to this, and I will defend <laughs> the, the crop circle community on this point. Nobody's been caught. Thousands and thousands of crop circles. Nobody's been caught. And that includes the aliens, right? Okay, so nobody's been caught. Uh, the two guys, and we'll discuss this uh, in a bit or whenever you're ready, but 
the the two hoaxers uh, who who surfaced uh, back in 1990 or something 91. We'll talk about it in a second. I don't have it in front of me. Um, and and they come out. They said, "Oh, we created 200 crop circles between." Uh, whatever it was, 1977 and, and 1991, something like that, 200 crop circles. And they demonstrated how they did it. And they had a rope, and they had a board, and they stepped through, and it was the sloppiest, the stupid. It was a hoax saying they were hoaxing. <laughs> That's what that was. And it was like, no, 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 no. You two guys are doing your thing, but you didn't do that. These two guys aren't going out into these fields with these elaborate geometric mathematical craziness of precision and and creating those. No, they they did not and that's it. I that's it. That's it. I will take that I will defend it. And in the meantime, nobody else has been caught. You would think that these crop circles, elaborate, ginormous in some cases, and and I've got some pictures and so do you, that have been created, and most of them virtually overnight. Um, Nobody has been busted. And to that point, if you're a farmer and your money is coming in from a wheat field and somebody comes in and plops down 500 circles and and literally ruins acres and acres and acres and acres of your income, you're going to be on the prowl. You're going to be armed. You're going to be dangerous. You're going to be ready, and you're going to catch somebody, and you want them to be caught because that's your livelihood. That's your money. That's never happened. And I and I will defend that. So with all of the video cameras, with all of this, and, and the alertness of the the – Crop circle community, uh, as certainly through crop circle season, they somebody would be on the alert, and that includes news and the media, and 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 journalists and people that are ready to go and to catch somebody and to bust somebody. It's never happened. It's it's never happened. There's only been one like slight case, so it remains an enigma. And until somebody gets caught, which apparently is literally thousands and thousands and thousands of people doing this, nobody has ratted anybody out, and there's been no evidence pre- presented for that. So I will defend it until it comes forward. Now, am I suspicious? Yeah. Are some human? Yeah, they are. But but the reports of this go back hundreds and hundreds of years. They used to call them demon circles. And we are going to get into that. I do have an image to share with people along with the story behind it. And while we're covering the information today, there is a poll up for those watching this live. And the question is, what do you think is behind the creation of crop circles? Out of the 185 votes so far, 19% say aliens, 18% say interdimensionals, 9% say humans, and 55% say a mix of all of the above. We will revise this poll near the end of today's episode to hear what people think about this. And thank you so much to me, boy, for supporting the channel as well. Jimmy, you started off with talking about demons maybe making crop circles. I'm going to share this image here and we will get into this story. Hold on. Let me pull it up. There it is. Look at this. It's called the mowing devil. And here we have what looks like a demon making these crop circles. And here, literally, it is a, well, it's not a circle. It's more like a rectangle, but it's pretty close to a circle. Why is this case so significant when it comes to researching crop circles? Because anyone could easily say, ah, you know what? It's just a demon making mischief. That's what they do. But how is there a connection between this, the mowing devil, and crop circles, Jimmy? Well, I mean, it's obvious. Well, that's a crop oval, right? <laughs> but th- this dates back to, uh, this is uh, 1678, and the pamphlet newspaper uh, uh, it's got this headline, the mowing devil, and you can see that there or, and underneath it, it says strange news out of Hartfordshire. 
And it's what I would consider uh, like one of the first depictions of a crop circle. Now, there's some there's some things that are strange here. One, it looks like he's cutting it, but you can see that it's laying flat, and you can definitely see geometry there being done, and and how the stalks are laying flat, very similar to today. But let's not forget here. The significance of this, this is 1678, and it was a mystery. Nobody knew how these circles were being formed, and of course, you know, you slap religion on it. In 1997, Christina, keep this up. Keep this image up. In 1997, the Oxford English Dictionary recorded the earliest usage uh, uh, for them of the term crop circles in the 1988 issue of the Journal of Meteorology. Now, that's interesting. It's an official journal. But the term crop circle is usually attributed to our good friend, Colin Andrews. And he started using the term in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Um, we, we do have a modern context to this because so much of it has been uh, captured uh, with with cameras and the images have been distributed and books have been written, but it and uh, to have uh, the Oxford Dictionary uh, do this in the in the late 1990s and pointing back to 1988. No, this goes back much, 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 much before that. It's not a modern phenomena, even though we do go through crop circle season every year. And while this took place in the 1600s, there was more of a prevalent amount of crop circles that appeared in the 19, the late 1970s, 80s, and 90s up until today. But the hot time frame was between the late 70s into the 90s, early 90s, mid 90s. And now while they're still happening, they're not happening at the same frequency not the same amount as before but this one when it comes to the mowing devil it is one of the very first ones that have been documented that people believe it to have a connection with crop circles but when we're looking at these more ancient depictions and stories there's a lot of room for interpretation sort of sort of sort of yeah it's sort of and this is why i really enjoy doing the show with you um, I, I needed to not debate, but let's let's put some more context into this because this is from 1686, the mowing devil. The phenomena was happening ten years later in 1686. Uh, an English naturalist, his name was Robert Plot, reported on rings or arcs of mushrooms in the natural history of Staffordshire and proposed that air flows from the sky was the cause, right? And, and, and so the, the mystery continued. In 1880, a letter to the editor of Nature by amateur scientist John Rand Capron describes how several circles, okay, this is 1880, of flattened crops in a field were formed under suspicious circumstances and possibly caused by cyclonic wind action tornadoes, um, stating that, and I'm quoting from him directly, as viewed from a distance, circular spots, they all presented much the same character. A few standing stalks at the center, some, some stalks with their heads arranged in pretty evenly in a direction forming a circle round in the center, and outside there is a circular wall of stalks which had not suffered. Now, uh, this is this is one of my uh, favorite images right here. And if we look at this image, this is uh, 2001, by the way. Uh, she caught me by surprise, but I'm ready to go. This is 2001, remote area of Milk Hill in Wiltshire, England, 780 feet edge to edge. Now, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you guys sitting down? Four hundred and nine circles. 
409. Yeah, that was that was Bob and Fred with their with their with their rope and two by four. Right, those two old dudes out there in the field creating 409 circles over 780 feet wide, and they are perfect. That, that is just isn't that so pleasing to the eye? Isn't it? It is that kind of symmetry. Yes, when you look at it, you're like, all you can really do is admire it. Now, I don't think the farmer was when he noticed that a lot of his crops were damaged, but for everyone else witnessing this, seeing this from above or seeing images, yes, it is really spectacular. Now here's a really interesting, in, uh, not I wouldn't say it's a fact, but some farmers, because let me, let me back up just a little bit. A lot of the crop circles, the majority of them have taken place in England. Yes, they have happened all over the world, like Bulgaria, Germany, the United States, so on and so forth. But the majority of them have taken place in England. Farmers were losing a lot of money with these crop circles that were happening on their land. So you know what they would do, Jimmy? You know what they would do in order to somehow make men ends meet? They would charge people. Of course you would. Top circle. Of course you would. I would. I would. I'd have my kids out there. Okay. No change. Only money that folds. <laughs> you know, you let's get, uh, the line forms here. Of course you would. Absolutely. Now, let's keep this image up for a second. And let me bring up a point that I have made a lot over the years. I think this way, and this is the way that my brain works. So just let me paint this picture for your audience. You have to place the center of each one of those circles perfectly. How is that done? Right? So the 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 skeptics out there, well, is somebody standing in the center with a string and you've got somebody walking around a mark? You have to do that, and in this case, 409 times. And geometrically and mathematically, it has to be placed perfectly. Perfectly. And when you look at this, this is an engineering marvel. This is right up there. This is like the Panama Canal. This is like, you know, this is an engineering marvel. I have no idea. And to, th to suggest that uh, these are college kids out for an evening prank and they draw this out on a piece of paper in, in class and then they all head out at night with flashlights and do that. Now, I'm not saying it's aliens. But when you look at this, Christina, somebody deserves some kind of medal, some kind of award, because that is not only beautiful, but it's complex, and it took a lot of time, and nobody got caught. That's crazy to me. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's aliens. But, man, we've got some weird things going on. Now, as we talk about causes of this, one of when I look at this image, you know what I often think of? Now, it's a strange thought, but could it be, I would love to see it just form, could it be some crazy um, Fibonacci electromagnetic uh, disturbance from under the ground that comes up like lightning, you know, and it's just some natural, you know what I mean? Some Fibonacci sequence thing that is forming this and that's how it gets done now but i know that sounds called the gaia theory no no yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's what people have considered it is referred to as the gaia theory where the earth is creating these kinds of crop circles attempting to communicate with people now it does sound like a stretch and that's why it's merely a theory but it's one that's very interesting and there's actually a handful of theories that people have considered over the decades when it comes to crop circles. But Android here says, if I win the Powerball tomorrow, I will offer $1 million to anyone who can do that with perfect geometry in less than 10 hours. I bet I keep my money. And this is a really 
funny thing to say, especially if you're doing it by yourself, that would be impossible. But maybe with a whole team, it might be possible. But imagine, just imagine here, the tramp lines that you're able to see in this image, the tracks, those that are from farming vehicles that that does the seating and those things they're big okay those they're huge so it gives you context on the size of the crop formation when we are looking at these lines right here that's three football fields wide and only that's americans <laughs> use that measurement and my gosh do i love it <laughs> It's, it's, uh, I, I, you know, just from a, a human engineering uh, perspective, I look at that and if, if humans did it, okay, and it's quite possible that they did, I would have loved to have seen it get done and how they pulled it off and the amount of coordination, uh, because you would have to have, it, it, it couldn't be a couple of people. It would have to be a team and, you know, four or five teams. Okay. You do this side of the circle. You do this quadrant. You do this one. You do this one. We're going to, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It seems too complex to pull off. So I, I, I don't know. Every angle that I look at this, Christina, it just gets more mysterious to me uh, for sure. But this is a great example of uh, somebody just answer it for me. Help me out. I need, I, my brain is just confused. As it, it is, is for it a is. lot of people. And so there's been some, again, some significant research done. I'd like to get into the science aspects. I think that's where a lot of people want to look into. And I get it because I'm there too. So while this took place in, I'm going to share another image. Hold on. Okay. It's just another oh, one. Oh, Germany. Cool. Yeah, this one's great. Yeah. This one's great. Well, now, uh, 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 let's go back to your uh, our opening statements here. Uh, we, we often make the connection to the United Kingdom. Okay. There are images and, and crop circles from all around the world. And this one happens to be in Germany. And this is also one of my favorites too, as well, but it's not England, everybody. This is Germany. Um, that goes with Switzerland has got their, their share of, uh, of, of images. This one, um, uh, let's see this one. Oh, this is from Bavaria, uh, Southern Bavaria in Germany, uh, from 2006. Oh, it says it right there. An aerial view <laughs> of Starnberg. So yeah, yeah. See, I've got my own notes. You like that? I, these are some of my favorite images. They are absolutely stunning. And we have so many more to share. And if you're enjoying the show so far, hit that like button right down below. Right now we have 458 people watching this live. Let's get to 300 likes if and only if you were enjoying the show. So getting into the science bit, something that we all want to hear. During the 80s and 90s, there was one scientist in particular by the name of William C. Levengood. And he was a right renowned biophysicist in a laboratory in Michigan. And he conducted extensive research on the plants collected from crop circles across the various countries over the what almost two decades he was doing research for these for these crop circles and his findings reveal that the plants and oh, actually i have an image for this it's really cool hold on here it is because what he noticed was that the plants they underwent changes at the cellular level with fractured and expanded cell pit walls indicating alterations within their internal structure that cannot be replicated by humans merely walking over them or wooden planks being pressed onto these crops. And so, like, for instance, a lot of these crop circles took place in wheat fields, cereal crop fields. And when it comes to cereal crops, they possess nodes akin to knuckles, like what we have on our hands, which enable them to stand up upright after being bent. So while slight nodal um, expansion, it's like a natural growth phenomenon and well known among farmers, the degree of expansion observed in plants from crop circles is 
extraordinary and cannot be mimicked by hoaxers using wood and rope. This is just one of several things we're going to mention. And I'm really glad that we actually have this image up on screen because this is something that is tangible. This is something that has a scientific basis behind it. It's not just hearsay. It's not just pretty photos of a nice crop circle, but there we're looking at it at a cellular level. And this is something that I think will pique a lot of people's interest. And Dan says, the Gaia answer I'd consider until you get things like the... Um, Arecibo. Arecibo answer and circles in binary code. We're going to we're going to get into that Dan. You're getting ahead of me. Hold on. But I like it. So, looking at this, Jimmy, what do you think about seeing these crops under a microscope, looking at it at the cellular level? Yeah, yeah, Levin Good uh was 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 brilliant. And his research, and there are a lot of uh, of the crop circle researchers uh, that point to Levin Good's research in photography and imagery and theories because he was a serious scientist and he was perplexed on this. And you're right about the nodes and, and the knuckles and all of his amazing uh, photography and research and measurements uh, about all of this, which would suggest... Um, Based on his research, now I know this starts to get out there, everybody, but he's a scientist looking for answers. Any of the natural aspects to this, stepping on a plant, breaking it in half, right, and then photographing that it, it, both instantly and then over time are not the same images and the same damage that happens from a real crop circle and how those nodes are formed. And you look at them and it is, they are different. I mean, there's just no question about it. So what it would suggest is I'm going to say supernatural, paranormal. There's something else going on. It's not something as simple as people stepping on this or crushing them or bending them down. There's something else that is causing it. Also, and you you have to see this for yourself. I have one image. I think you have this image uh, too as well. But I'm going to pull this image up, Christina, because I think it's significant. And if uh, I, I know, like I said, I think that you have this image. But I'm going to put this up now because there is another aspect to this that is important. And it's how things just happen to lay flat and overlap. Now, if you if you really look at this, that is incredible. And that it that is not how much trampling would have to be done to get this kind of consistency on the the ground of a field. Right, to have that and to have the overlap and the overlay that is happening here. There isn't any mistakes. There isn't anything strange. It is just absolutely perfect. Now, these nodes that we're talking about are here, right? The bending of the plants. And, uh, but this, this, this is strange to me. It just doesn't look natural. It doesn't look normal. And when I say normal, I'm talking about when you go out into a field like this and you just start trampling stuff down, right? But that's not what's happening here. It's this. That's incredible. Imagine turning that into this. How do you do that? How do you do that overnight? I, I, and that's what, um, uh, that was what was so interesting about Levin Good and his research, because as a scientist, you look at this and you the the simplest explanation is it's a bunch of people out flattening fields. So gather the evidence, 
what's coming from this field versus going over and flattening stuff yourself and breaking stuff yourself, photographing it and looking at the differences. And he found it all the way down at the cellular level. It was, it was a very interesting answer and it was very controversial. People didn't want to hear it in the scientific community. It, uh, it ruffled quite a few feathers for sure. It's controversial even today. And I do want to say, the Bishop, thank you so much for supporting the channel. And honestly, just everyone that's dropping Super Chat and Super Stickers, it really helps the channel. So I want to say I really appreciate it and thank you so much. Um, something that I wanted to bring up here is, is the aspect of hoaxers. I know we have people watching this live and they're saying all crop circles were created by humans. And before doing the research for this show, I, I was leaning towards that way now finding this information i'm thinking maybe a lot of them could be but maybe not all of them but let me provide you an example i'm going to share an image here really just as a visual aid so that we're not staring just at our face but what's interesting about some of these crop circles is people have mentioned having healing properties people have measured higher levels of radiation um more so than other ones that have been accepted as being man-made yes we've had a have had and we probably still do have a handful of crop circling circle groups that are making these out across the world and some of them have come forward especially the ones in england like i think it's called project satan that were later changed their name to circle makers and there's a few others as well but that's like one of the more uh, famous ones when we think of these healing properties obviously the first thing that comes to mind at least for me is uh, it must be the placebo effect it, it must be all psychological where we have this idea that if i tell myself you know what there's a crop circle it's gonna heal me of all my ailments right and you go in and then you feel better right that's the placebo effect but it is more difficult to explain the higher levels of radiation and what's I think is a really interesting thing to consider here is these two these two points. You have one where you have crop circles that could definitely that have probably been made by humans and maybe those groups have said, "Yep, I made this." Now, they didn't tell everyone, and so these people that are coming in to look at this crop circle, they're having these psychosomatic What's the word I want to use? Psycho, like they just think that they're being healed. But just, just bear with me on where I want to go with this. What if this is like kind of odd? It's just a theory. What if that if these crop circles are being made by people? What if it was on purpose, in the sense of to do someone else's bidding or something else's bidding? Why am I bringing this up? Because there have been a handful of crop circles that have been made and seen where people are seeing UFO sightings, where people are seeing these orbs going in and out of the fields. The question is why, especially if those crop circles were made by people, what would be the purpose behind it? Look, if, if we're just tiny little ants, we're doing all the hard work, right? Don't you think? Hopefully, what I'm saying makes a little bit of sense here because it's just something that i'm speaking as i'm thinking about it but there might be a little bit to it in, back in 2014 and i remember this like it was a, yesterday it was 10 years ago um nvidia right the chip maker uh, the ai chip maker right nvidia uh, did a crop circle up near San Francisco, and it, it made the news, it made the media, and they did it out in this farmer's field to promote this newest chipset. Uh, that and and it was a it was a well, you can call it a crop circle. It was a circle uh, with a computer chip in the middle that was square and had circles on the outside of it. Um, now, I don't remember the exact size or anything, but here's here's the thing with that. I remember looking at it and went, oh, okay, holy crap. And then I took a closer look and I went, eh, kind of sloppy. All right, now this is NVIDIA, and it took them a couple of weeks to make this, and it's not that good. 
And the farmer was so angry about it. Uh, immediately after he found out he had the entire field plowed. All right. So we couldn't go back and, and check it out and find out. But, but that was an example of something that was uh, meant to be a media, uh, uh, you know, a marketing uh, ploy. And it, it, it worked for a minute for NVIDIA. It was before the CES show in Las Vegas. But it, when you really took a close look at it, it was sloppy. And they did the best that they could, right? They had teams, and they spent a lot of time on it, and it just wasn't that good. And then you look at this one, the the famous uh, three birds uh, uh, crop circle, which is, again, this is one of my favorites uh, uh, out there. That is beautiful. Um, it's pleasing. Uh, there's a message there, and if you look really, really close at how the birds are are done and how the circles are done, this is geometrically as complex as anything that has ever been done, and it's 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 just beautiful, stunning. It's it's one of many that really have shocked people over the years on how it was created now can people make this sure but you need a you need to understand geometry basic mathematics and have a good team that at the very least you can trust that can mimic your work what i did also would like to state referring to dr levengood was that he had researched more than 200 crop circle formations and what's interesting here i'm about to sneeze <laughs> I didn't you got that sneeze button you got that sneeze button but what he also researched and something that there is this connection is animal mutilation so we also investigated 12 animal mutilation cases and numerous locals which were reported to be ufo sightings included four landing traces in Israel and several several over in the United States. And almost 90% of the plant samples collected, so out of that 200, 90% of the plant samples tested from each of these um, situations showed significant, like, honestly, just significant changes in the cellular level when compared to controlled samples obtained in the exact same vicinities and the most common changes included included excuse me altered embryo development in seeds enlargement in plant stems and nodes and marked bending on the stem nodes from cavities blown into the nodes from the inside out so from his research, he wasn't able to give a plausible explanation on how things like this were happening. But from the 200 fields that he collected these plants, again, 90% had all of the characteristics that I have just mentioned to you. And then he compared it to a, a similar sample in the same vicinity, but not a part of that crop circle. And it was just your average plant. These ones had very bizarre changes in them. And to this day, it's still controversial. People don't want to look at that detail when conducting research into crop circles. And he is just one of the very few scientists that has taken a very serious tone with the crop circle research. Yeah, don't take the mystery from me. Don't take it away from me. It's like Santa Claus. I'm going to stay right here. I'm okay with that. I love I love this aspect to it. And and, and until there's some definitive, you know, the the crop circle gang gets gets busted situation. So look, if you put if you get a group together like you had mentioned the circle makers, you get a group together and you guys are out there doing it, go for it. Right? But, but we know what you're doing. It's the other ones. When you back up 1932, 
Christina, this isn't the circle makers. This is 1932. Archaeologist E.C. Kerwin observed four dark rings in a field at Souton Down near Chai. Ch- Chichester, Chichester, but uh, couldn't uh, couldn't ex- he could only examine only one. But he said, "quote A circle in which the barley was lodged or beaten down, while the interior area was very slightly mounded up." That's 1932, 1963. Patrick Moore described a crater. Now this goes back to what you had just said. This is why I'm mentioning this now described a crater in a potato field in Wiltshire that he considered was probably caused by an unknown meteoric body. Okay, a meteor. In nearby wheat fields, there were several circular and elliptical areas where the wheat had been flattened. There was evidence of spiral flattening. Spiral. Okay, very interesting. Caused by a meteor? I don't know. He thought that it could have been caused by air currents from the impact of the meteor. Nobody knows. Now, um, astronomer Hugh Ernest Butler observed similar craters and said they were likely caused by lightning strikes. Right. So this is is a phenomenon that's been going on uh, for a minute. Now, one of my favorite uh, parts uh, when we talk about this is the UFO connection. And in 1966, there was the the Tully Nest. Do you have images of that? She does. She's going to pull this up. This is the 1966 Tully Saucer Nest. And it was when a farmer said he had witnessed, there it is right there, a saucer-shaped craft rise 30 or 40 feet from a swamp and then fly away. On investigating, he found a nearly circular area, 32 feet long by 25 feet wide, where the grass was flattened in a clockwise curve to water level within the circle, and the reeds had been uprooted from the mud. That, that's pretty incredible. That's pretty incredible. During the 1960s, uh, UFO sightings and circular formations in swamp reeds uh, and and sugarcane fields were happening all over the place. This was a a very, very strange situation happening at the same time. Uh, There was, I don't know if you have the video, pretty famous video on the internet uh, that's been around for a few decades now of a light bouncing around an orb, ball lightning, which was also attributed, right, to uh, crop circles, bouncing around in this field, and you can see the grass coming out where the light is bouncing, and you can see the circles form. And then in the morning, they went out, and it looked like that, where it was a circular, flattened formation. Again, going right back to Levengood and his work, that's what this reminds me of. I'm not going fully sensational crazy town here. I just don't have the answers. You and me both. I don't have the answers either, at least not yet. Now, that could change, but today is not that day. And Brian, thank you for that. He says, looks like the original saucer skipping across the water, referring to the bird crop circle. Yeah, it's pretty bizarre. And the bishop, thank you again. You are so nice. Looking more into this particular case, it got so much attention by the local media that the police and the Royal Australian Air Force, among others, went to the area to investigate. And some of the reeds were analyzed by the physics department at the University of Queensland. And there were also additional investigations in the vicinity, which identified smaller nests, because at the time, these were called UFO nests, and a series of very ambiguous footprints as well, hinting at the presence of beings. They could be people or not people. (laughs) But what was interesting about this particular case was that Pedley not only had a crop circle nearby, but he saw, he observed a large circular patch of water spinning 
and noticed that the reeds had been uprooted from this area as, as Jimmy had mentioned. And this is something that you might ask why. And more so than that, he's at returning later, he discovered a swirled layer of reeds on the water surface arranged in an anti-clockwise pattern and still green, though by the afternoon when he had someone else visit, the reeds had turned brown rather quickly. This is one of the most famous cases when it comes to crop circles, and it's one that has been documented better than others when you have a witness like this one that didn't necessarily see the crop circle being made, but but saw movement versus just seeing the finished product. Now, uh, this just popped up from Sarla. Is that the Led Zeppelin uh, crop circle? This may be, I think this is the one that Led Zeppelin used. Yes. And and that just shows you how it elevates up into a pop culture. Uh, there is uh, the Randy Rhodes guitar, too, as well. Uh, the, the Jackson, it's called the Roswell Rhodes. And the fret markers on that were crop circles. And yeah, so right into pop culture. This is something that... Uh, again, uh, I can't I can't emphasize this enough, uh, Christina. This isn't some modern thing. This this goes back hundreds of years, maybe maybe longer than that. But uh, the documented part of this throughout history is there, and it's pretty solid. Something has been going on in in the farm fields around the world, which is um, now let, let's let's examine some of this. Uh, I'm going to ask you some questions. How many, in a percentage wise, do you think are humans? It's just a human thing, humans going out doing what humans do. Well, according to Andrew Collins, about 80% is man made, while 20% is still in the category of unknown, not really sure how they are made. And is, is that where you fall? He has done significant research, a lot mm -hmm. of on the ground investigations. So what he says, referring to the statistics, it seems very plausible. Now, if it were to say, oh, 40% are made by humans, I think I would have had to humbly disagree just because we are aware of a handful of groups that have come forward and have mentioned them making crop circles, but it still doesn't answer the UFO sightings, the orb sightings, some of the healing properties, the high levels of radiation, the high levels of a stronger magnetic field than other locations. Those are still unknown. We do not have the answers to those pieces yet, to those questions. So I think 20% is, is a very decent answer to give on the part where we don't know how they're made. There are really, really good researchers out there uh, that can walk into a crop circle and look down and know if it was man-made or not. You just look down and go, oh, no, this one's real. All right? And it, it has to do with, with how they are bent and, and twisted and overlapping because they interweave, right? And they lie perfectly flat. And you can look at where they are broken or bent and tell right away the difference between something that was man-made or not. Um, and that I, I have never experienced it. Now, I've talked to quite a number of, of people that have uh, gone out during crop circle season. They head out. There's a new one in this field. Let's go. And, and some of the more famous ones where I've had friends that have walked to the uh, exact center. Yeah, the center. And, 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 and felt something different going on there. And now whether it's 99, 66% human. These are interesting numbers. Where are you getting these from? From the live chat. I think this is a great question to ask people. It is a great question. Or even on replay, what percentage do you think are 
if if crop circles are man-made. And I'm going to actually read this poll out again. Right now we have 428 votes, 29 votes. And the question is, what do you think is behind the creation of crop circles? 24% have said aliens, 16% say interdimensionals, 9% say humans, and 52% say a mix of the above. So if you haven't answered that poll, please do so. We want to hear what you have to say about this. But if we're bringing in just the information on humans, out of all the crop circles that have been shown across the world, what percentage do you think humans have done? Let us know in the live chat. The, the Let's get to uh, uh, frickin' frack. Okay, let's talk about frickin' frack for a second. All right, which is Doug Bauer and Dave Chorley. Okay, frickin' frack. I don't, do you have any pictures of uh, frickin' frack? No, but I can pull it up. Okay, pull up uh, Doug Bauer and, and Dave Chorley. Uh, they, they, they got pretty controversial because they claimed that it was them. Well, it would could have been them if they were 300 years old, but they were not. Uh, but they say that they created and started the phenomenon in 1978 uh, just using a plank of wood, rope, uh, a baseball cap fitted with a loop of wire to help them walk in straight lines. Some things, you know, some things you want to make up, right? Yeah, there's there's your guys right there, right? I'm not making this up, right? That uh, now, so they bring out the media and they go, look, we'll show you. This is how we did it. And it was like to say Laurel and Hardy uh, is, is speaking bad of Laurel and Hardy. To, to see them demonstrate, to go out with the holding the rope Right, taking a step, and then the the foot was on the two by four on the plank of wood, right? And they're taking the steps and they're flattened. It is sloppy. It is funny, right? But I think that even the reporters that were there kind of stepped back and said to themselves, "Well, um, thank you, but no, it wasn't you. It just you did not do this. You did not do this." And so um, uh, the. The they said that they were inspired by check this out Australian crop circles. That was the other part. There was a lot of crop circles uh, that were happening uh, then. They said that uh, they made all. Okay, listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying. They did all crop circles before 1987. These two guys. Now. I, 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 supernatural, paranormal, aliens, humans, what? But it's not these two, and they demonstrated for the media that it wasn't them. <laughs> and that's it. I'm just, uh, I'll never forget watching that on the news, which I did. I saw it on the news. Yeah, there they are. There they are. So here's a whole newspaper clipping on it. And then here are the crop circles that they created. We're able to see it here on screen and also demonstrating how they did it. They had their precision done in the sense of knowing basic geometry, having a plank with some string and using their foot to press down on the crops. So they did go into detail on how they were able to accomplish this feat of creating crop circles, which did end up influencing other people to do the same. Yeah, and you know, uh, I'll give credit where credit's due, right? It inspired some uh, some really good artists to go out there and do it. Now, uh, I don't know if you have the image. Do you have the image of the radio telescope in England? No, but I can pull it up. Okay, pull pull that crop circle up because that was a question and answer from ET. And I've always allegedly, everybody, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not going in full, full, full crazy here, but um, we sent out an image in in binary code, and I think Carl Sagan was involved in some others, and and we sent this 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 message out, 
and we got a response back from ET. Now, at the time, nobody saw this crop circle get created, or crop image, I should say, that appeared overnight right next to one of the largest radio telescopes in all of the United Kingdom. And it's right there in the field, right next to it. And you've got an image of uh, ET. You've got some binary code. And you've got a message. And I, that's that's pretty good. Now, was that created by humans? The, the mystery behind it? Now, look, everybody. I get it. I get it. I get it. But at the time... Nobody really knew what was sent out and what it looked like in the binary code. Okay, the image that came back and that appeared in the film uh, appeared in the field. Apparently, either you had somebody that knew what the binary code conversion looked like and and leaked it a spy got a bunch of friends together plotted it out for a response to the binary message that was sent out now that okay that's like occam's razor that would be the simplest answer or you've got the other one which may be message received and et sent back their response to ours because what we sent out was a stick figure of a human, right, with some binary information, um, some chemical data about chemistry, and then ET sends us back a gray alien with their binary information. Do you have the image? I have ours. Uh, I can pull that one up. It just it took me a little bit longer than I thought. You're referring to this one, right? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, this... Okay. Um, go ahead and tell everybody what that is. I'm going to pull up the the I'm going to pull up the image. Go ahead, continue. Okay. Well, while you do that, Dave, thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Those Jimmy's fade to black and Christina's show have entertained me many a night. Thank you both lots. Thank you so much. And Dan, thank you as well. Says they have claimed they uh, pole vaulted in and out of the circles avoiding leaving tracks come on guys you know what at one point in school i thought i could do pole vaulting and then i heard a story of a woman who like bit off of her tongue and i never wanted to pole vault ever again and the bishop says you are all amazing thank you you are as well jimmy did you pull up that image yet i, I i'm almost there i'm almost there i got it i got it jimmy's got it Jimmy's got it. Okay, now I've got two. Let me pull up this one. This one's the better one of the two. Okay, all right. Yeah, I got it. Let's I got it. it. Jimmy's got it. Do, 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 do. Oh, okay, Christina, just relax. Can you can you relax? Can I click on the right folder? There it is. Let's pop it in here. Okay, and just hang on, hang on, everybody. You just everybody, just relax. I have it right here. Okay, got it. Do, do, do. Oh man, and see, this is always. I want everybody to know we have to go, and you've got to click share window. Yes, boom. But there it is. And just popped up in the field right next to the radio telescope. So we've got this image here. That's pretty good, actually, by the way. Um, and then you have this one with the DNA and the answer back uh, versus the one pop, pop up yours. I just took it down. Okay, let me let me do that. But we can't do it simultaneously. No, we can't. We can't. But it's an answer to this. See, so that was a very, very simple set of code that we sent out, and then we got this one back in the field next to the radio telescope. So, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, well done. Look at you, Christina. See? See? Hold on. Let me make it bigger. Now, now I'll go back and forth. That's some snazzy stuff right there. Yeah, well done. Well played. Well played. Oh, and and Hides made me made me giggle. 
It says most 70 year olds I know are avid pole. I know, bowlers. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man but uh yeah i, I you know I, I again i i don't want colin andrews is very smart and the and his research and so forth we have him to have him to thank for so much of it but i'm not so sure I'm I'm not I'm not going up that high. When you look at Levin Good's bill, Bill Levin Good, when you look at his research onto this, uh, it very clearly demonstrates something that is not natural. And when I say natural, that includes humans creating it. But there's something else that is electromagnetic and that possibly involves radiation, something that is distorting the cellular uh, composition of not only where the knuckles and the nodes are, but in general of the plants, the cells are actually changed. And that's very strange. That's not a natural occurrence. Could this happen again from... From lightning, there is another uh, a, a, you know, something electromagnetic that is causing the the cellular changes, and especially the way the nodes are are formed. There's that part, but there's another interesting thing that uh, people have talked about over the years, and that is: is there a, a, sw- a perfect geometric swirling of a vortex? that can force down something uh, in in the center of a field to collapse the wheat. Because the circular way that this is happening uh, would indicate uh, some type of of vortex or swirling or twisting in a direction. Now, could it happen like that? I don't know. I simply don't know. I mean, to create this image, I keep going back uh, to this image. It's 409 circles, everybody, over 780 feet wide and geometrically perfect. Now, this isn't freaking frack. They, they didn't do this. They, they, they didn't with a, with a ball of wire. Again, that was something that was demonstrated, and I've seen it, uh, the attempts at getting people to walk out. You know, you're 100 feet away, and you've got a string – And out to that person, and they're walking, and you're marking the spot where you're going to make your circle. Uh, And that's in a basic sense. And it never was concentric. It was never really geometric. It was never, it didn't have the artistic value to it. So, and when you look at something this complex, and I've seen this mapped out, I've seen the the construction on this, on, on how it, how it's been laid out i've seen the overlays on it and it is it's gnarly christina from from a mathematical point of view it's it's really gnarly that is the best word to use for this i because i have to agree with you on that just contemplating how this could have been made in a short period of time it's it is very mind-boggling Next, I'd like to mention some patterns that have been found when looking at crop circles. Because one of the earliest recorded instances of a crop circle dates back to around the 1600s. And we had mentioned that as the mowing devil. And it was in an oat field, which was accompanied by sightings of orange orbs in the sky, as documented by Lewis Evans in his book, Witchcraft in Hertfordshire. I feel like I said that one right. Well okay. done. Also, well done. The, thank you. The Hertfordshire folklore. I know one of my people across the pond is going to say, Christina, you butchered that. But at the very least, you notice and you're paying attention. And maybe <laughs> that's why I butcher words. But there's more to this. Because you even have the internal crop circle formations were you know, simple circles, which later evolve into ring circles and circles accompanied by smaller satellite circles. This is a prevalent theme that we see in a lot of crop circles. And the one that we're seeing on screen is a really fantastic example of that. Now, by the 1990s, these formations had delved into more intricate patterns. So in the 70s, they were 
a bit more basic, still complex, but basic compared to the crop circles in the mid and late 1990s. And most crop circles are found near ancient sacred sites, such as Stonehenge, with folklore surrounding these locations often mirroring crop circle phenomena. In the United States, people have mentioned that the crop circles seen here are close to Native American burial grounds, which is sacred land. And the, the question is, why? On, on both sides, if it was extraterrestrial or interdimensional, and why it would be for humans, why created in those locations? Is it because there's more eyes there? Is it because there's a little bit more of an energy significance there? The possibilities are endless, and we have to throw in all of the theories out there for you to make up your own mind on why you think it is, or is it just a mere coincidence? And just because, you know what, that, that plot of land, it looks kind of good. Let's go make a crop circle over there. That could also be a possibility. But individuals entering crop circles frequently report experiencing a profound spiritual awe. This is what has been studied for the last few decades. And as another question as to why that could be, could it be the placebo effect? Could it be psychosomatic? Or could it be something genuine? It's the same thing where when you enter certain parts in the world, doesn't matter, in the forest, who knows where, you feel something a little bit different than other locations. One place that people always mention is Sedona, Arizona. People say, oh, that place, it's full of healing. It's the red rock. It's the vortexes. Some people feel it. Some people don't. That's just, that's just like one of those prevalent examples to provide to you. But with these crop circles, could you get something similar there? But also this phenomena has been observed globally. This is happening all across the world. And is it, because, is it because there's a bunch of people that have an interest in crop circles and they want to just recreate art? Or is it some kind of communication? And let's say, let, let's use this image as an example, Jimmy. If this was some form of communication, how are we supposed to decipher what it means? Do, do you have to decipher it or isn't it just a tap on the shoulder saying hello? Right? That that's it could be as simple as that. Now, Paul Anderson, uh, I'm going to pull this up. Paul, thank you for this comment. Paul says if the Triskelion uh disc is human made, recreated in a night without leaving a trace. It'd be interesting if somebody offered a bounty. Now, if I was, right, if I had all the money, right, I would. I'd do it. I'd say, okay, simple. Here's your picture. I've got a million bucks. Do it over there tonight. Right? Do it tonight. Do it tonight. And make it look like that. I'll give you a million bucks. Can you imagine the mess that you would see the next day? I can guarantee, I, there are no guarantees, Christina, there aren't, but I can guarantee you, they wouldn't do that. <laughs> it, would not, it would not look like that. It just wouldn't. It just wouldn't. Whoever, I, did, I, I want, uh, I would love for somebody to come forward and, and say, look, this was us and, and, and we're the team behind it. Here are the drawings. Here are the plans. This is what we did. This is how we laid it out. And this is how long it took. Here's the video that we shot of us that night partying after we were done. Right. Okay. All right. That, I, I would love for that to happen, but it won't. Right. And, and like I said, it's kind of like Santa Claus, you know, this is the tooth fairy stuff. I don't want to know the truth. I don't. Some mysteries are left to be uh, right there, not to be solved. And I am going to. I'm going to share this. I want to. I just want to share this really quick because this one is is pretty pretty cool. This is Switzerland. Beautiful. And and I think uh, you have an image of this. This is uh, a blossom shaped crop circle known as the cornflower. All right, and this appeared in June 2008 in Diesenhofen, Switzerland. 
Um, I, it's just stunning. Now, here's the thing. Now, you can see somebody standing right there in the middle. You can see some people walking the path of it out here. Now, this look at how this is done, the re repetition of each section and how we, you can look at the other geometrically placed circles in other intricate ones like the three birds and so forth and understand that. But now we're talking about a five-pointed, right? Frick and frack aren't going to go out into a field with a piece of string and place those five buds right here, these. Look how they're angled and look how they're done and placed. Now, it, okay, I, I get it. Somebody very smart went out there and was able to lay this down and and get this placed. Uh, this is, again, let me uh, get the correct dating on this uh, for everybody. This is 2008. So in 2008, well, you had Loran. You had a few GPS things, uh, you know, creeping out. Could you do that? Can you do it with a compass? It's, this is one of the more beautiful uh, crop circles out there, and it doesn't make any sense on how it was done. It's very complex. Something that you touched on that just kind of sparked a thought, and that is referring to freaking frack, as you call them. These people that have commented on creating crop circles, why weren't they persecuted? by the farmers for ruining their property. That That's my question, okay? I, that, that's one that I want people to answer. But on top of that, what is the message with this, Jimmy? If, you, if, if some of these are real, what do you think the message is? Or are we too primitive to just even begin to understand a non-human intelligence communicating in such a way? Well, how do, how, okay. That's a, it's a wonderful question. And how do you, without freaking everybody out or talking above somebody, right, where this is our world, this is what we understand, right? We understand what we can see. And so to suddenly uh, interfere and come into this world with something that we don't understand at a level of knowledge that we we just don't have a way to grasp or wrap our mind around. How, how do you do that? How do you interfere into somebody else's world? And it's just like uh, something as simple as uh, a fish in a fishbowl. That's their world. That's all they understand. And here we are looking into the fish tank. We got a TV in the background. Right, we've got a laptop on a desk in the background. We've got a, a Roomba vacuuming the floor. Does the fish understand any of that as they're looking? No, 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 not not at all, not at all. So how do you how do you communicate with the fish to let you know that they're there? Well, throw some food, right? Disturb the water a little bit. Tap on the glass. That's what this represents. You would just tap on the glass. You're not going to come at us full force, <laughs> right? It just you. It would be confusing to us. We wouldn't understand, and that's that's it. You have to be more gentle, and I, I think that's a, a good way to look at it. I don't. I don't have another way of. I, I this is something that I talk about a lot, and our level of being able to understand something increases a little bit every single day, right? So if we see something in the sky or we see a car racing past us, uh, a, a plane, whatever, a cell phone, we are able to understand how that works and what its use is. But you can't take a car or an airplane to 200 years ago and expect people to understand what an iPad does. And, and how it connects to the internet and what electricity is and what an LCD screen is and 1920 by 1080 resolution. <laughs> right? But these are basics today. We have a level of understanding, 
right? And the, you have to look at it in that context. So something that would introduce themselves to us more advanced than us, they would have to understand you, you've got to be gentle with that. You know, just like any of of the explorers that were going across the Pacific Ocean, you know, in the 1700s and, and pulling up to an island where nobody had ever seen a sailing ship before, let alone armor or cannons, uh, uh, compasses, right? When you're on an island where people are still fishing with spears, right? And making fish net out of human hair, right? That's what that, that's, that, that was life. Right. And to see that, you know, how do you absorb that? They freaked out. Right. And so it's, it's, we have to look at it in, in, in that context. And, and that this is, if it's not human created, then it's like a softball. It's an underarm pitch. You know what I mean? It's a very gentle way of saying hello without freaking everybody out. Christy has a question for you, Jimmy, and it says, didn't Art Bell interview a man that made 3D models of some of the crop circles? I think he was a pilot. Do you remember that? I do not. I do not. Made 3D models of something. No, I, I don't remember that. Sounds interesting, though. Friggin' Art. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Thanks, Christy. I, I don't remember that. You know, uh, as much as, and I appreciate, uh, I get this all the time. So, Jimmy, um, I got a question about Art Bell. Well, you know, just because I hosted Coast for seven years and I, you know, worked for Art for a minute, um, I, 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 I'm not the authorized biographer. And I certainly don't uh, remember everything, um, but I appreciate that. And the reason why I bring that up is Art had a huge effect on the world and the community. And a lasting effect. And, and people remember those special moments that mean something to them, like Christy with, with the pilot and the 3D models. Um, I have my moments with art uh, over the years. I, I, let, let's stay on this for a second, if we may. Indul let me uh, indulge for just a second. There was a show that uh, art did, and it was of a member of the U.S. Army that was stationed in Germany. Now, this is the story. Okay, this is the story part. So he comes on, Art interviews him. And he was part of a military detail that gets sent out to this site. Everything is all hush-hush. It's in the forest. And they come up, and on the side of this hill, these trees are, are mowed down. And then planted in the side of the hill is a flying saucer. And it crashed into the side of the hill. And so, and this is in Germany. And the United States Army is out there trying to dig up, remove. They've got cranes. They've got trucks. They've got military personnel trying to get this flying saucer, this craft, out of the side of the hill and dismantled and put on these trucks and taken away before everybody finds out about it. And he was part of the, the detail. Now, I remember the show, and I remember the amount of detail uh, from this guy. And I thought to myself, this is going to blow up and be one of the biggest cases. Now, here we are. That was in the early 90s when Art did that show. Here we are 30 years later in 2024, and that show is gone, right? It's gone. There's no books have been written about it. There's been no follow-up on it, but I remember it. It's one of my Art Bell moments. And, you know, it's that's the effect that Art had uh, on, on the community and on myself personally. I never, I couldn't find out anything about this case. Couldn't find anything out about that guy. Uh, his name escapes me right now. I have notes from it. And and what what was what whatever happened to all of that? And it just like poof, just like disappeared into the ether and and was gone. But it was a special show to me, and I never forgot it.
Are you muted? A very special way with words and, and how he told stories and information. And so that's why he is so well remembered compared to so many others that have attempted to do the same thing as himself. Now, Lillian brings up a super chat that I'm really glad that you actually brought up because I am in contact with uh, Jaime Maussan and waiting for the English subs. But here's the but when it comes to this. The Peruvian authorities and police shut down the press conference today. So we shall see what is going to happen. And for those listening to this, her question is, I started following you when you did the Mexican hearing. Why did you not cover the third press conference in Peru about the, quote, alien mummies today? And I just provided you an answer. So we'll is see. That, is that right? Wait, 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 wait. Okay. So I have uh, Renee. Um, I'm glad that you brought this up. So Renee... Uh, sent me an email. I didn't get a chance to read it. I was uh, uh, out doing work today, and she sent me a breakdown of the hearing. Okay, my summary of several presenters, including Masson, asked, so, oh, the police arrived. And they went searching for the bodies. Oh, is that right? A new body was mentioned just before uh, the individuals of the Peru Culture and Ministry attempted to hijack the conference and said they would file a lawsuit for the bodies. They eventually sat down to watch the presentation. Police arrived, later referenced as 20 people in total. 20 cops showed up. Uh, after a few minutes, a culture of ministry personnel and police left. Uh, they expected to steal the bodies from the pe- press conference. Really? And okay, a I did. official took the microphone over as well. And as soon as I get the dubbed version of the press conference, I will post it. But as you can tell with the information that Jimmy and I have provided, uh, it's not going so well so far. But as you know, I'm waiting for it. And maybe it might happen in a few days. We might get something. Okay. I've got a long, long, long. That's the opening two paragraphs from Renee. I've got a long, uh, a long list of stuff. Okay. So I'm going to go through this and maybe we should think about doing, doing a show maybe this weekend on this. Mm. Yeah. I think it's going to be worth people's time because here's the thing. If this was all a hoax from the beginning, why is the police coming and official government officials coming? And and what is going on here if it's just dolls? I mean, it's, it's something, there's a little bit something odd with this entire thing. And they found a partially formed embryo in one of the new bodies. And it has been documented and photographed with an MRI as well. Yeah, I'm I'm reading her notes on this, too, as well. Okay, so I'm going to jump into this. Renee's probably watching uh, you and I right now. Uh, Hello, Renee. Thank you. Renee has been with me for 10 years, and I got to tell you, she is on it. To have somebody, uh, uh, you know, by my side and, and getting the research done, and paying attention to everything, uh, uh, there's only one of me, um, but having uh, a team around us. And Renee is just absolutely amazing. And she sent me, uh, today I was out. I, I, I was out uh, getting stuff done. I don't want to get into the details of that. But uh, I knew that the, the press conference was happening, and, and Renee spoke to me about it yesterday. And I knew that she would have it handled. What I did not know until right now was that it got raided no i did not i did not know renee i apologize for not opening up your email i i've got a busy day today to the news and then christina and then i've got fade to black tonight and my thursdays are are go 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 and and now i'm reading her email i can't believe it i, I would have opened the show today with this um no i did not know they got raided wow that's crazy it's so crazy. We'll, we'll see what happens and the answers that they provide for the reasoning to doing that. Because whatever answer they give, it's going to be sufficient enough 
for them to be given the authority to raid a conference like this. So it's it overall it is very suspicious. It's very fishy. And just did, like did, you knew, I want answers to this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Christina, uh, tell me, did, did, were there mummies there? Did they have to anything on display? To my understanding, no. There weren't. So, so the Ministry of Culture and the police were expecting to have mummies there, and that's what they were doing? They were raiding? But it seems like at the conference, they only showed video and pictures. Okay, now I had to sneeze, and it passed. <laughs> I had to sneeze, and it passed. This is, uh, this is pretty crazy. And so did Jaime know in advance that the police were going to raid the Ministry of Culture and they didn't have mummies there? I was under the impression that that's why they were doing this in Peru, because they couldn't get the mummies out of the country for what they did in the United States, right? Somehow they got those mummies out the first time over to Mexico City, remember? And I think we were all shocked to have them rolled out on stage. And I had said then, I know that we're off the subject of crop circles, everybody, but to me, this is breaking news. I had thought then... When Jaime rolled those out on stage, that somebody in Peru, somebody in Ica, right, at the Ica Museum at the university was like, uh, go downstairs, check the vault. Are those mummies still there? Right? And they go down, they open up the doors, and the mummies are gone. How do they get from out of here to Mexico City? Somebody's got to have some answers for this. I am sure that's the way that the Ministry of Culture and the government of Peru was looking at the situation with Jaime. So then uh, the, the, everything else has been video. He did the presentation here in Los Angeles a couple of weeks ago. All of that was live video feed out of Peru. Couldn't get the mummies out of Peru into the United States. All right. And now when he announced this press conference in, in Peru, I thought that they were going to have Raphael. Remember little Raphael that they did the MRI of that Raphael is going to be sitting on the table there uh, for the world to see. But no. So maybe Jaime knew in advance that uh, they were going to get raided. I'm I'm not sure. I haven't spoken to Jaime yet to get more information because it is something that right now, as we speak, is k getting traction on what is going on, especially how Jaime has been handling the situation as well. So hopefully we will get more information. Jimmy and I, we, we can do a show on that. And then Lu says, please send me that information. My email is in the description box below. And if not, then it's in my social media link. And I would like to know more information about that. And thank you for supporting the channel as well. Jimmy, I appreciate you doing this show with me on Crop Circles and then ending it with the Peruvian mummies. You are so awesome. Who do you have on today for Fade to Black? Uh, tonight, I've got John Malore. And you know what we're doing tonight on the show? Now talk mm -hmm. about tiptoeing. Christian ufology. Interesting. Yeah, right, right, right. I'm all about this. This is going to be a fun show tonight. So I'll see everybody tonight on Fade to Black. Fantastic show today. Christina, as always, I'll see everybody later. Thank you. If you enjoyed the show, hit that like button right down below. We just need 20 more likes to get to 500. So hit it only if you enjoyed the show. Out of everything that we covered today, which case which piece of information was your favorite let me know in the live chat let me know in the comments i do try my absolute best to read all of the comments so tomorrow is not going to be strangest news of the week it's gonna be moved over to saturday because of my work schedule so please make sure to hit that notification bell right next to the subscribe button so you do not miss that live show that will be on saturday instead of friday if you need help relaxing, falling asleep, or using your imagination to wander the universe, take a look at my music channel called Cosmic Portals, or you can scan this QR code and it'll take you straight there. If you like space ambient music, that channel is for you. Also, that QR code will take you to all of my social media links. And by the way, I write articles for all of the shows that we do right here on this channel. 
So if you want something a little bit more bite-sized, those articles are your friend. You can find it on my website on strangeparadigms.com or on Medium and then just put at Christina Gomez and you will find it there as well. That is it for today. I will see you on Saturday. Be safe and remember, keep your eyes on the skies. If you enjoy the strange and the mysterious UFOs, the paranormal and cryptids, this channel is for you. So make sure to subscribe as I do three videos right here every single week and hit that notification bell so you do not miss any of the bonus content I post right here.